Hello grade threes and welcome back to Worksheet Cloud. Welcome to your grade three maths lesson for today and I hope you've had a lovely day so far and that you're ready to learn something new with me again. If there are any things that you don't understand during the lesson or if you have any questions that you might want to ask, you can just ask mommy or daddy to help you send an email to grade three at worksheetcloud.com and we will try and answer your questions as quickly as possible. Now, if you haven't seen me in a lesson before, or if this is your first lesson with Worksheet Cloud, my name is Teacher Taryn. And today we are going to learn all about the breaking down method. Now, we've already done a lesson about the breaking down method, and that was adding. Today we're going to do subtracting. So let's revise what we have done before. We've learned about renaming or decomposing and that just means that you are going to break a number down into its hundreds, its tens, and its units. Now this is very important for the breaking down method because we are going to group all these things together. So let's look at our first example. There are no hundreds in this number, 24. 24 is a 20 plus a four. If we write it in or draw it in blocks, we have two groups of 10 and we have four units. 123, now this number has 100, it has tens and it has units. So it is 100 plus 20 plus three. So if we draw this in blocks, we have 100, we have two groups of 10 or 20, and we have three units. So let's have a look at the breaking down method that we've done already. We did adding. So we're going to have a look at this example, 55 plus 21. Now we first want to rename both of these numbers. So 55 is a 50 plus a 5 and 21 is a 20 plus a 1. Now, if we draw it with our blocks, we have five groups of 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and we have five units. We have two groups of 10, or 20, if we count in 10s, 10, 20, and we have one unit. Now, all our 10s, we are going to group together, and all our units we are going to group together. So let's do that. We're going to move all our tens to the side. And we're going to move all our units to the other side. Now if we write it in numbers, we've grouped all our tens, the 50 from our first number, the 20 from our second number, and we've grouped the five from our first number, the unit, and the one from our second number, the unit in that number. So now we can write it as a sum. We're going to group all our tens and all our units together, but we're going to do it in the same line. So our sum was 55 plus 21 is equal to, and we're going to put a block at the end because this makes it a number sentence. We don't know yet what the answer is, so we put a block in its place, a placeholder. Then we need to have a line for our tens, and we need to have a line for our units. So you don't have to, but just so that we can remember, I'm going to put a capital T and a capital U. Now in our tens line, we're going to group all our tens from our numbers. So we've got 50, and we've got 20. And we are working with a plus sum. So we're going to say 50 plus 20, and that is 70. Now in my units line, I'm going to group my unit from the first number, the 5, and my unit from the second number, which is a 1, and I'm going to write it in the line. 5 plus 1 is 6. But now because I renamed these two numbers in these two lines, I need to put this number back together again. So I split it into tens, there's my tens answer, 
and I split it into units and there's my unit answer. And now I need to put my tens and my units back together again. So right at the end, I'm going to say 70 plus 6 is 76. And that is my final answer of my whole sum. Now, what happens when I minus? I can use exactly the same method. I'm just going to minus instead of plus. So, the same example, I have 55 minus 21. I'm still going to group all my 10s together, the 50 and the 20, and I'm still going to group all my units together, the 5 and the 1. But now instead of adding them together, I'm going to subtract or I'm going to minus. So this is what my sum is going to look like. Remember is equal to a block is always my first line, my number sentence. Then I need a 10 and I need a unit. This is my tens line and this is my unit line. And now I need to be careful that my sum is a minus sum. So I need to minus in my tens and my units line. So I'm going to say 50 from the 55 minus 20 from the 21 and 50 minus 20 is 30. Now in my units line, I'm going to say 5 from the first number minus the 1 from my second number. 5 minus 1 is 4. But now in my last line, I need to remember that I took my number apart, I decomposed my number or I renamed my numbers into its tens and its units. So now I need to put my answers back together again, my 10 and my unit. So now in my last line, even though I am minusing in the sum, I need to add these two together so that I don't have two separate numbers, but that I have one final answer. So I'm going to add my tens and my units together to get 34. So 55 minus 21 is 34. But now I need to watch out for a trick because 51 minus 24. It might look the same as the last sum that I did, but now we need to be careful because I'm going to group my 10s, my 50 and my 20, and I'm going to group my units, my 1 and my 4. Now already I see a problem because 50 minus 20, I can do that, but 1 minus 4, that is where my problem is. If I have one block and I need to take four blocks away, I don't have enough blocks to be able to take four away. So if I look at my sum, how I would write it out, remember my tens and my units, my tens line does make sense. I saw that when I packed it with my blocks. 50 minus 20 is 30. I can do that. But now my units is where the problem comes in. 1 minus 4, I definitely can't do that. I can't take 4 away from one. So what now? There's a little boy and he looks very confused and he's asking, what do I need to do? Now the first thing that we all want to do is we want to say four minus one because I can take one away from four. But let me show you why we cannot do that. One minus four looks like this. I have one circle and I want to minus Four circles. That is what that sum looks like. Now, if I want to say 4 minus 1, it means that I have four circles and I'm going to take away 1 from the 4. But this is not the same sum. So I cannot swap my numbers around to say 4 minus 1. It just can't happen. So 1 minus 4, I can't do. But here is where the clever trick comes in. 11 minus 4. Can I do that sum? Yes, because 11 is bigger than 4. I can take 4 away from 11. But where did that 10 come from? 
that I put in front of the 1 to make it 11. I'm going to go and borrow that 10 from my 10's line. I'm going to put a line through 30 and I'm going to take 10 away from the 30 and I'm going to go and put it in front of the 1 to make it 11 instead of 1. So if I took 10 away from the 30, it means I now have 20 left. And I need to remember to put the 20 there for later on. 11 minus 4 is a sum I can definitely do. I can take 4 away from 11 and that is 7. So now I've finished my tens line. I've finished my units line. And now because I decomposed or I renamed these two numbers in the lines, I need to put these two back together. I need to put my tens and my units together to make my final answer. So I'm going to say that 20 plus 7 is 27. Where did that 20 come from? It came from my tens line because that's all that I have left. I took 10 away. I have 20 left. And in my units line, I had a 7. And that's where that 7 came from. And now I can say 20 plus 7 is 27. Okay, let's try another example. I have 133 minus 46 is equal to a block. And that is my number sentence. I need to, in the beginning, say that I have hundreds because my first number has a hundred in it. My second has a ten and I have a unit. So this is my hundreds line, my tens line and my units line. Now I'm going to rename these numbers in each line. So in my hundreds line, my first number has one hundred and in my second number I don't have any hundreds. So I'm going to say 100 minus 0 because there aren't any hundreds in my second number. So 100 minus 0 is 100. That's quite an easy sum. Now in my tens line, my first number has a 30. My second number has a 40. So I'm going to say 30 minus 40. But now I see a problem already because 30 is smaller than 40. I can't take 40 away from 30. Can I swap this around and say 40 minus 30? No, I definitely can't. So what can I do? I can say that my 100 over here, I'm going to borrow. So I borrow 100. So I have zero left in my hundreds line. But what am I going to do with that 100 that I borrow? I'm going to go and put that 100 with my 30. So now I don't only have 30, I have 130 minus 40, and that is a sum I can definitely do. So I can say 130 minus 40 is 90. Now, my unit line has the same problem, because now I need to say 3 from the first number minus 6 from my second number. So 3 minus 6, can I take 6 away from 3? No, I can't because 6 is bigger. So can I swap them around and say 6 minus 3? I definitely can't do that either. So what do I do now? I'm going to go to my 10. I'm going to draw a line through my 90. If I take 10 away from 90, I have 80 left over. But that 10 that I'm going to borrow... Where am I going to put that 10? In front of my 3. So now I don't have 3 minus 6. I now have 13 minus 6. And 13 minus 6 is a sum I definitely can do. I can say that 13 minus 6 is 7. So if I look at my hundreds line again, I have no hundreds left. I have 0. In my tens line, I have 80 left. And in my units line, I have 7. So now I'm going to put this number back together because I renamed my two numbers in these lines. I'm going to add the 80 plus the 7 is 87. What happened to my 0? 
I don't have to put it in my last sum because it is nothing. Okay, let's have a look at one more example. 124 minus 39 is equal to a block, my number sentence. Down the side, I'm going to put hundreds, tens, and units because my first number has a hundred in it. And now I need to rename my two numbers. Let's see if you can do it before I even get to that step. What is my hundreds line going to look like? I'm going to say 100 minus zero. Well done, because there aren't any hundreds in my second number. So 100 minus zero is 100. In my tens line, I'm going to say 20 minus 30. So 20 minus 30 is, oh no, I can't do that sum. So where am I going to get a bigger number to add to my 20? I'm going to go and borrow from my hundreds. If I take 100 away to move to my tens line, then I have nothing left over. So that 100 I'm going to go and put in my tens line, and that is 120. That is a sum I definitely can do. 120 minus 30 is 90. Now let's look at my units line. I can say 4 minus 9. And can I do that sum? I definitely can't. So I ask where am I going to get more to make my 4 a bit bigger? I'm going to borrow from my 10s line. If I take 10 away from 90, I have 80 left over. What am I going to do with that 10 that I borrow? I'm going to go and put it in front of the 4. So it's not 4 minus 9, but it is 14 minus 9. And that is a sum I can easily do. 14 minus 9 is 5. Now because I renamed these two numbers in my three lines, I'm going to say add my 80 plus my 5. And I'm going to put my number back together again. 80 plus 5 is 85. What happens to my zero? It falls away because it is nothing. My final answer is 85. So grade threes, you are very clever. And if you practice, the more you practice, the more you're going to understand. I hope you've had a lovely time learning about the breaking down method and how to add and subtract and how to subtract with borrowing. Have a lovely afternoon, grade threes. Till the next time that we can learn something together, goodbye. And this lesson was brought to you by Worksheet Cloud.